of all of you that we were able to do all of that. Cannot say thank you enough. It has been an honor and a joy for us to serve. Uh, we have had the help of so many people and just wanted to point out the uh, an extra thanks to the scribes who have made all this beautiful art for everybody. Um, for to help us say thank you to all of you who contribute in so many different ways. Thank you. Without further ado, we're going to do our final business. Their Majesties call before them the members of their board guard, Sibrid Frumba, Dorotea de Beckham, Adelina Cecilia Vasari, Di Werther, Brigida Rosa Van Metten, Tommaso Franceschi, Hillis Thornbringer. Proclaim to all throughout the lands that we, Louis, King by right of arms of the Middle Kingdom, and Sai, our Queen of War and Song, have witnessed the service with which these recipients have exemplified the ideals which we strive to uphold, and therefore do we wish to acknowledge them with a fitting and seemly manner, with some visible token of our esteem. We are minded to give unto them a royal augmentation of arms. The charge will be a liar within a crescent. They will work with the College of Heralds to fit this arm augmentation within their arms. What's up? What's up? manage their scrolls. I did want to throw an additional thank you to everybody that uh, took me up on my, my offer slash challenge to bring music to the kingdom throughout the rain. Uh, so many of you joined me around a fire to sing songs. So many of you played music for court or for concerts. Uh, a lot of you performed and entertained us at feasts randomly throughout the days. A lot of you uh, sang with us on the battlefield at Penzik. Uh, there was music at every turn, and it was exactly everything that I had been hoping and dreaming for. And I, I heard a lot of good feedback. It sounded like a lot of you also enjoyed that. So hopefully, hopefully it can live as a good memory in all of our hearts, and maybe we can continue making music in the future. It doesn't have to be tied to.
Your Majesties invite before them Tommaso Franceschi and Estelle de la Mer. Is there a royal peer who will attest to Tommaso's nobility? Your Majesties, if I may, Countess is old is not able to be here today. I have her work. If I may approach, please. I am the old de la Rene, the sister of the Laurel and Lady of the Rose. I will speak of Tommaso Francesco's nobility. A noble man is one who is good and unselfish. And Tommaso has shown how unselfish he is. This is a sign when it really is all about you. <laughs> Tommaso didn't take that advice. He immediately started praising others. He contacted some peers of recommendation of whom he felt were worthy of recognition. Then he started writing about them, <clears throat> posting about their skills and skills. His actions speak well of him. the chivalry who will attest to Tommaso's courtesy and chivalry. Yes, Your Majesty, there is. I have that singular honor. May I make a general address? Please. I am Count William of Fairhaven, Knight of the Society, and I would speak for Tommaso. Let's talk about prowess. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> prowess is exceptional skill at doing a thing. It's not just about fighting, it's about anything. Tommaso is proud. He is proud at music. He is proud at many styles of music. He is proud at music theory. He is proud at explaining music theory. <laughs> Even to me! <laughs> the depth and breadth of his knowledge in music is both awesome and inspiring. He will be a boot to the kingdom as a peer. He also has one more particular skill I thought I might just mention. He is the most knowledgeable person I have ever met on the music of a rather obscure band. The bird name, the crows, the, the eagles. I, while many of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about, he knows more about this obscure group. And when my lady and I were our performances in the Ethereum, we thought we might do the occasional song by this obscure group. And when we struggled, I called Tommaso, and he sorted us out. And uh, we received an award for doing those performances. And that was due in some part to the band Field before you made it in the field. You'll be an outstanding. Tommaso's service. And I gotta follow that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yes, your majesty. Oh, I can walk through here. I am Richard Van Dusen, Master of the Order of the Pelican. I speak for my friend Tommaso. Service comes in several forms. Active service, getting things done, seeing what needs to be done, and making it happen. Tommaso embodies this. Often you would go, boy, I didn't see that coming, but it worked. <laughs> also, service can be Passive, inspiring you to be better. Tommaso and I would often journey on pilgrimage to a place where instruments are elderly. <laughs> and we would speak often of music theory. And we would go to the place where there are instruments 
that would land both of us in divorce court. <laughs> And we would take these instruments, and he would pick one off the wall and say, Here, try this. <laughs> and we would play, and we would be inspired. He inspires me to be a better musician, to be a better person. And I can't think of anyone more worthy to be elevated than this. Oh, Lord. He is my friend, and he is my Defense, Latesta Tommaso's courage and honor. Your Majesties, I am not a master of defense, but today I have the honor and privilege of carrying the words of Baroness Cismena von Anzier, master of defense, if I may. Please do. Tommaso, rumor has it that you are smarter and handsomer since court at Penzik. <laughs> I would have loved to see your further transformation today. I am sure you are radiant. It is my deepest regret to be unable to speak in person for you and extol your peer-like qualities, but I trust Maestro Lucia to bear my words and my love. The Book of the Courtier inspires many in our kingdom, and I believe that society was also so inspired when outlining the virtues of a peer. While Castiglione wrote the courtier must display sprezzatura, elegant nonchalance, society calls for a peer to act courteously and nobly. A courtier must be an instructor, and a peer must share their knowledge and skill with others. A courtier must be versed in art and combat, and so must a peer. A courtier's highest aim is to support their prince, and a peer must respect the crown. I would speak to you of Tommaso's qualities, showing his attainment of both titles. While I have full confidence in stepping out on a rapier field, I feel I am terrified to step out into bardic performance. As a fledgling bard, I am conscious of every mistake and flaw. Tommaso is a model of grace in the face of error. He can start with the wrong things, quickly adjust, and continue beautifully. He does not miss a beat between mistake and perfection. Though his prezzatura in performing, through his prezzatura in performing, he has shown me that it is possible to recover and still deliver a stirring performance. His bearing of goodwill helped me feel welcome at Bardic Madness and in every encounter since. Tommaso will bring a smile to my face every time I see him. Tommaso can also flow effortlessly from instrumental and vocal to performance to instructor mode. He can converse on any number of esoteric topics, from the evolution of stringed instruments to the politics of Dante Sperenza, a particular interest of mine. Tommaso can engage his audience in wanting to know more and dive further into his fond of information. His passion and enthusiasm draw people into learning. His mastery in both storytelling and music is inspirational, and Tommaso willingly shares his skills online. Tommaso's pool of learners extends far past the boundaries of the Midrealm. My home barony of Sternfeld has an active group of rapier bards. Tommaso is proud of his identity as a rapier bard. Which is stronger, the sword or the pen? Well, we need not come to a definitive answer today. But Tommaso wields both. Uh, but he does not just exercise his rapier wit, he serves those communities as well, and so many others. Rapier marshal, bard guard to Queenside, premier bard and champion of Andalpre, all in a day's work for Tommaso. Finally, I would speak to Tommaso's respect and support of the crown. While he's done direct service to the crown and kingdom, as mentioned previously, Tommaso has been of particular service to the representatives of the crown, the present and former, baronesses and barons of Amalekar. Tommaso has shown excellence in the arts and rapier combat, but as before, he goes above and beyond the barony. He lifts up the barony as a pillar of Amalekar and shows diligence and inspiration. Tommaso, you know what you did to be worthy of such recognition. The barony and whole kingdom are better to be positive. My crown, fellow citizens of this great kingdom, I say to you now, Tommaso is the perfect courtier and my peer. Tommaso, welcome to the next stage in your path. You are a shining star and will continue to do great things for the society. of the populace who will attest to Tommaso's quality. May I speak, your majesty? Yes. I am Ida Stormbreaker, 
A humble bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tomatoes are a humble fruit. They are sweet. They are plump. They are juicy. They are lovely, adaptable, versatile, and surprisingly saucy. <laughs> <laughs> The first time I saw Tommaso's name written down, I said, now who the heck is naming themselves Tomato? <laughs> and Tommaso has never let me forget that. But Tommaso is like a tomato. He is sweet. He is surprisingly humble, especially for a performer. Trust me on this one. <laughs> he has the most noble heart that I have encountered in ages. I have seen him turn from his performance and speak out to somebody who is new, who is confused, who is scared, and will teach them at a drop of a hat. There we go, theatrics. <laughs> and yet at the same time, he is humble enough to know when he still needs to learn. And he takes that with the same grace and spirit with which he teaches. I have never seen him raise his voice in anger, but I have often heard him raise his voice in song, in joy, and laughter during the darkest parts of the pandemic where we could not meet in person he tirelessly came to a ferial bardic after a ferial bardic and he sang and he played and he taught and he nurtured others and was a shining glorious light to the kingdom and now polished and all full of bay leaves which go really well with tomatoes by the way <laughs> she is a gift an absolute gift to the kingdom and though i am but a humble bard i cannot think of a more worthy person to recommend to your majesty for the order of the laurel because being like Tommaso is what I aspire to. And I love the work. Thank you. Members of the Order of the Laurel. Members of the Order of the Laurel, present yourselves before their majesties. Good nobles, it's your, it's your opinion that Tommaso, for his skill in music, is worthy of elevation into the Order of the Laurel. Aye. Tommaso, right mindful of your service to the society and responsive to the wishes of your peers, your resolve to create your best. And the moral wreath has ever stood for excellence, so it will be given to you as the symbol of the mastery of your art. Therefore, will you, Tommaso, give us your word to continue to fulfill the requirements set forth for the governance of this order as you will surely have to the labor's noble, increase your talents as befit one of your rank, and seek to disseminate your talents and abilities throughout the society. You promise to train any dependents you may have likewise. Wear this hood as a sign, outward sign of your station. Wear a medallion. Take from our hands this symbol of nobility and token of our esteem. Wear it proudly that all may recognize your skills and your service as we have acknowledged it this day. Wear this wreath as a 
symbol of your excellence. Now, swear your fields each and every. shall never forget or fail to reward that which is given. Guilty with love, service with honor, and oath breaking with vengeance. Remembrance of oaths given and received. Remembrance of your lineage and obligations. Thou, good peer of the realm. Rise, Maestro Tommaso. Realm meet your newest companion of the Laurel. <laughs> Hear all now a voice of the dragon from Louis, king by right of arms, and sigh, we of war and song. Of these words, unto Maestro Tommaso Franceschi. In peerage let thee dwell, a laurel shall you be. The proof is fair, the very uke a rent guitar shall be. No walls of marble black, twixt bards and music keep. Thy music, sweet melodious sounds, welcome friendly sleep. Thus, Vanished are our woes, and vanished are our cries. So bring your stories nigh, as bread doth rise, as bread doth rise. <laughs> Set by our hands this 23rd day of September, in our barony of Middle Marches, Anno Societatis 58. For Maestro Tomaso, newest companion of the world, huzzah! 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 I love to dance. <laughs>
also receiving Royal Vanguard today will be Ezra de Barcelona and Alistair McRae, who could not be here. For the four champions listed here, arts and sciences, archery, drone weapons, and equestrian. Huzzah! Huzzah! Their Majesty summoned before them, Sir Marcus Panarius Trachadarius. Your Majesties, I wish to beg a boon. Ask it if it be a right proper thing within our powers, it shall be yours. As my squire Roberto has now sat vigil for these many weeks, I ask that he be elevated to the order of the chivalry today. Their Majesties call before them. Roberto Jose Alfonso Cayetano de San Fernando Toledo Ruiz y Escalante. In thy strength, O Majesties, the just man shall exult, and in thy benediction he shall rejoice exceedingly. Lo, one such man before you emerges, Roberto Jose Alfonso Caetano de San Fernando Toledo Ruiz de Escalante. I present to thee this supplication and thanksgiving, that thy spirit and comfort may be centered down upon him, strengthening and fitting him for this service of knighthood, and count him worthy to make known without condemnation the word of your will of ascendance. Brutus who taught him and sent him among the hard path of prowess, and entrusted him and taught him and guided him to lands distant and near for the path of justice and succor. Your majesties of the Dragon Kingdom, you're vigilant, ready to receive thy rare and sublime elevation to your most noble order of the chivalry. of themselves.
companion of the Laurel that will attest to the Burrow's <coughs> skill in arts and science. science. Assembled noble guests. I am Laureate Strasino Sobriano. Uh, Roberto! <laughs> so is a little bit. Not very much. Generally with a lot of help from other people. But that's okay. Because you know what he can do? He can do research. And he can do impeccable research. That tells you about Companion of the Pelican, who will attest to Roberto's service. I am Madre Beth Silas Stone, Baroness of your court, and I will speak to Roberto's service. Long has service been a quiet element of our society, weaving its way into every aspect of our fun. So one would think that Roberto, my jaunty squire, with <laughs> wouldn't necessarily fit that mold of being quiet and being behind the scenes. But to tell you the truth, that's what I admire about his service. His loud, unrelenting commitment to helping the society and our mighty kingdom learn about its proud diversity. I appreciate his willingness to have and facilitate hard conversations but very, very needed conversations about equity. I am very proud of how his service continues to grow as he continues his journey. And while he will always be my eating squire, <laughs> I know he will continue to serve the kingdom as best he can. We need more service like Roberto's. And I cannot commend him enough to your majesties. He is my peer. Thank you. Woo! Their majesties now call before them their order of the chivalry. Noble sirs, is it your judgment that Roberto Jose Alfonso Cayetano, the son Fernando Toledo Ruiz y Escalante is worthy? be numbered among our chivalry and prowess, loyalty and courtesy. Aye! Roberto, right mindful of your prowess on the field and responsive to the wishes of your peers, we are reminded to make you Know that to wear the belt and chain of a knight is to hold the sacred trust, that the obligations of knighthood will demand your efforts every moment Knights of the society must be respectful of all religions, never offending the faith of another. A knight must respect all those who are weak or defenseless. Whether because of age, infirmity, poverty, or vow, and be steadfast in defending them. A knight must love their kingdom and fulfill most faithfully their feudal duties to their baron and their sovereign. Their word must be dependable beyond doubt question. They must never flee from the face of their foes. They must be generous to all. And always and everywhere, they must be champion of the rights of the kingdom. The laws of the society and customs of the kingdom require that a knight be proud. As you have demonstrated, you are upon, upon the field. That a knight be courteous as you have shown yourself to be, as these nobles attest. <coughs> and tonight, be loyal to their kingdom and the society. 
Do you still desire to be a knight? Is there a belt? This belt was placed around the waist of my knight. She locked my key. It was placed around my waist when I became a knight. And now it should be used to knight my squire. There a sword. <laughs> Bear your sword with strength, so disposing your heart to goodness that you never use it to injure anyone unjustly. Always use it to defend the just and the right. Is there a chain? There is a chain. Same story as the belt. <laughs> <laughs> Spurs. Where are you, Maxie? These are the open spurs. First worn by Ike Brander, then Finn, Edmund, Augmundus, William, David, Oberon, Michael, Ephraim, Vernon, William, Gilon, Bonner, Rand, Patrick, Lothar, Nikolai, Palomar, Ismail. Richard, Randolph, Alaric, Robert, Thomas, Alvaric, Thorfinn, Uller, Vitus, Baldwin, Stodd, Dimitri, Nigel, Dorkin, Ruder, Ragnar, Axel, Kellen, Rector, Gunnar, Cadigan, Farthen, Silverthorn, Echo, Artair, Boris, Callum, Crispin, Ingram, Nicholas, Wolfer, Odo, Allrecker, Bruce, Christian, Winpang, Jamie, McKenna, Cedric, Thorin, Gephardt, Braun, Angus, Geary, Magnus, Marcus, Corbus, Wolfric, Ivan, Harold, Timothy, Sirius, Onan, Rangi, Sibrid, Angus, and now, Roberto, Jose, Alfonso, Antonio, Pesciuto, Sledo, Maurice, yes, one. That's going to be Roberto. Where are these spurs? shall never forget to be your liege lord. Rewarding fealty with love, valor with honor, and good breaking with vengeance. In remembrance of both given and received. In remembrance of your lineage and obligations. Thou good night. Bear this love and no other.
Wide Realm, your newest knight of this society, Roberto. <laughs> Outstanding service as our king's champion and queen's champion. Rapier, we hereby make them a companion of our order of the Royal Vanguard. For the newest members of the Royal Vanguard, Katrin and Kristoff, huzzah! Huzzah! Majesty's call before them, Tamsin of Roaring Waste. As has been known in this realm from ancient times, it is the privilege of the crown to create certain honors and bestow these honors upon worthy subjects at its pleasure. And foremost among these honors is that of Court Baron Baroness. For the created <clears throat> Baron of Court Baroness is to be admitted to the rank of nobility and to be worn in a special position in the order of precedence. And while the court baroness has no power by that title over others, still shall they bear suitable honor and great distinction for themselves and their deeds. Baroness Tamsin, newest court baron. Huzzah! Huzzah! Oh. Their majesty's call before them, Sabra of Darkyard. All us, Louis and Sai, dragon, king, and queen of war and song, do command unto the populace of the Middle Kingdom, a member of our realm and dear to us, Sabra of Darkyard. 
She is most deserving of advancement and of your honor and respect as Baroness as of our court in recognition for her service as our Chamberlain. For Baroness Sabra, newest, newest court Baroness. Good job. Their Majesties call before them Severin Brumbach and Hawk Hornbjörnsen. For Sir Severin. Good King Louis and brave Queen Sive saw the prosperity of their realm and, knowing that its riches would tempt even the most pious nobles, sought a champion to defend their treasure. <laughs> Far and near they searched, and many brave warriors presented themselves. One good knight stood out from the rest. Severit Brumbach answered his king's call to be his champion. In times of strife and in times of peace, he stood at his liege's side, ever his stalwart guard guardian. For his service, King Louis and Queen Sai are reminded to make him a companion of the Order of the Royal Vanguard. <laughs> Proclaim throughout our realm that we, Louis, King by right of arms, and Sai, our Queen of War, send heartfelt greetings. Know that in consideration of their outstanding champion as Queen's champion, we hereby make Hawk a companion of our Order of the Royal Vanguard. Your Majesties, may I have a word? First, I would thank you for letting my squire return to me. But I would say he has served me well for many years. He has served this group and his local area and people for even more. In this past year, he has served this kingdom, and to return it into my hands would be an injustice. Thus, I swear, I... I beg of you. Ask it if it be a right proper thing, it shall be yours. I would ask that you offer the order of to my squire Hall. Their Majesties call for the Order of Chivalry. His sword fame was seen. He entered the home gang and girls saw their doom. Whispering low words, they're weird before them. The pests of a champion, inspired by flame haired beauty, lashed out like lightning, going <laughs> swift as serpents. Right away, what Who comes armed into our presence? We buy. Which thing the younger? Heir to the Empire. Of the Middle Kingdom. What is it you seek at our hand? If it is yours by right, by the laws of the society and the customs of our kingdom, then it is yours. I have come to claim what I have earned by right. Your crown, your blood. You will take oath and bear witness that this is indeed the Tanis to the Middle Kingdom. Tournament in accordance with the laws of the society and the customs of the Middle Kingdom. I will, Your Majesty. I, Heloise Burke, stand King of Savage. 
Like I have the Earl Marshall. <laughs> 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 check his teeth. <laughs> and I, your man, sovereign has no right to the common joys of living, no freedom to indulge personal interests, tastes, or biases. The sovereign is a sacrifice to the common people, one who lives to serve by ruling, protecting the kingdom by disciplining all private beliefs and sentiments. Submitting themselves to absolute objectivity or justice. And in a time of famine or weakness, as it must come from time to time in every land, there must wear the finest raiment and laugh the hardiest and lightest board of any and all the kingdom. The sovereign must place the people's needs before all else. To be sovereign is to respect all matter and things. Sovereign. Do you still desire for the crown of the middle? I do. Then take the cloak of the sovereign. to the great nobles of the realm. I swear. Swear to the people. I swear. People of the Middle Kingdom, behold your new king. Stand with dignity and grace to the birth of the crown. They must 
lay aside the privileges of personal choice and bias and place the good of the kingdom above all else. Be a sacrifice to the common people who live to serve the kingdom. must join their hands to the sovereigns with a sure touch to rule the kingdom of the And in times of famine or deepness, as must come from time to time in every land, they must stand resplendent for all to see sit the throne of grace, the inspiration of all who stand The burdens of the crown cannot be given away or shared, but must be borne by the sovereign and husband. You still desire the crown and the throne of will. I'll take the oath of of the Middle Kingdom, behold, your battle-born queen of shenanigans, Nyasa! <laughs> into their court. <laughs> From the first days of the Midrum unto this day, it has been known in this kingdom that a combatant fights upon the field, defeating all others in tournament in order that they might crown their chosen inspiration, our queen. It is therefore fitting that one who has been so inspired and has borne the weight of the crown, who has ruled these lands as king, shall be acknowledged count. And these counts shall wear as their emblem a coronet embattled of gold, ornamented as they might see fit. And by token of this coronet will they be known of persons of great merit and consequence. They shall be addressed as Your Excellency, and great respect shall be given them. From the days, first days of the Midrum unto this day, it has been known in this kingdom that a combatant fights upon the field, defeating all others in tournament, in order to have the privilege of crowning their chosen inspiration our queen of war and song. It is therefore fitting that one who has inspired such valor and has borne the crown with such grace and courtesy shall be acknowledged a countess, and these countesses shall bear as their emblem a coronet and battle of gold, ornamented as they might see fit. And by token of this coronet will they be known as persons of great merit and consequence. They shall be addressed as your excellency, and great respect shall be given them. First off, good gentles, please have your seat. Good gentles, that the people of this our realm may know the worth most noble, their excellencies, Count Earl Louis and Countess Side. Let the herald read forth the proclamation of their new estates. All gentles and nobles know by these words that we, Wickdane, King Barad of Arms of the Middle Kingdom, and Nyasa, our queen, in rightful succession to Louis, and Sive, and mindful of the excellent manner in which Louis has served the Middle Kingdom, giving of their valiant efforts in battle, are most pleased to acknowledge them as Earl. And though an Earl holds no authority or power to command, they are to be granted such honor and respect as befits a person of great worth and courtesy. They shall be known by their coronet of gold embattled, and their counsel shall be weighed as befits one who has borne the crown of the Middle Kingdom.
all gentles and nobles know by these words that we win thanks to the king of the king of the by red arms of the middle kingdom and NASA are queen are ruling in succession to side and mindful of the grace and nobility which side led to the crown of the middle kingdom and know full well the toil and patience with which they have served the kingdom are pleased to acknowledge that countess. Although a countess holds no authority or power to command, they are to be granted such honor and respect as befits a person of great worth and courtesy. They shall be known by their coronet of gold and battle, and their accounts shall be weighed as benefits one who has borne the crown of the Middle Kingdom. My dear sir, in service to the crown of the Middle, Middle Kingdom. Kingdom. This do we here and shall, shall never forget, forget nor fail to reward that she is given. Guilty with love, service with honor, and oath breaking with justice. <laughs> For their excellencies, Earl Louis and Countess Sive, Baron and, Baron and Baroness of Roaring Waste, huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> Their Majesties call before them all members of the Order of the Rose and those royal consorts present today. The Rose stands as a symbol of our Queen, one who has set an example of courteous and noble behavior. They have supported the aims and ideals of the society and have consistently shown respect for the crown of the Middle Kingdom. They have willingly shared their knowledge and hospitality with others. Receive this Rose, Countess Sive, as a symbol of your grateful service. And the cloak, please. For the newest member of the Order of the Rose, Countess Sive. Huzzah! Huzzah! should bear the burden of the crown alone. Every monarch has their partner, their attendants, their friends, and their family. As such, their majesties, Wigdane and Nyasa, hereby acknowledge and affirm the responsibilities that have been thrust upon their prodigy. <laughs> and progeny. And while the position of the children of royals offers no rank as such, it is just and proper that they have an outward token of their status within the kingdom. <coughs> Let me guess. We're going to go on an adventure. Mm -hmm. 
For the Children Royale! Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're stuck up there and can't stop. Her Majesty's call forth, Captain Gettings Woolerson. Gettings, we are pleased by your valor, your skill, and your scores on and off the field. We would ask you to continue to be an example of those ideals we hold dear. Getting Woolerson, will you serve as my armor champion? Take the oath of office. This do we hear and shall never forget, or fail to reward that which is given. Feel the with love, service with honor, and oath breaking with justice. <laughs> <laughs> Take your place. Their Majesties, all before them, Sergeant Charles Alt. Charles, we are pleased by your valor, your skill, and your courteous demeanor on and off the field. We would ask you to continue to be an example of those ideals which we hold dear. Charles Alt, will you serve as my champion? Aye. <coughs> Take your oath of office. Shall never, never forget, forget or fail to reward that which is given. Feel to with love, service of honor, and no breaking with justice. We call Sir Cavern O'Dell before their majesties. Sir Cavern, we are pleased by your valor, your skill, and your honorable demeanor on and off the field. And as you continue to be an example of those ideals we hold dear. Sir, will you serve as our king's break your champion? Yes, sir. Do we hear and shall never forget or fail to reward that which is given? Fields of love, service with honor, and oath breaking with justice. Countess Juliana de Bordeaux, present yourself before their majesties. Juliana, we are pleased by your valor, your skill, and your honorable demeanor on and off the field. We would ask you to continue to be an example of those ideals we hold dear. I right here. <laughs> then please take the oath of office.
this moment here shall never forget nor fail to reward that which is given. Guilty with love, service with honor, and an oath breaking with justice. We call Lady Valya Abnikova Do before their majesty. The kingdom stands or falls by its accomplishments. The Middle Kingdom stands through the wars of summer by fourth farms by the strength of its army. Yet these armies would stand unclothed and disarmed without the artisans and craftsmen of the kingdom. As our champions stand by us in sword, bearing the sword and shield with which the kingdom stands, so too it is our desire that our champion in the arts and sciences accompany us as well. You shall be at the very foundation upon which our armies and all of the people of our kingdom stand. Valya, do you wish to accept this honor? This to be here I shall never forget, nor fail to reward that which is given. Fealty with love, service with honor, and oath breaking with justice. Their Majesty is called before them, Gwyneth Cole. Gwyneth, your prowess and valor is gone. Both on and off the archery field are held in high regards by ourselves. Therefore, you are minded to make you our archery champion. To be our archery champion means to hold chivalry and courtesy at all times and serve as an example of those ideals we hold dear. What if you choose to accept this honor? shall never forget or fail to reward that which is given. Serves guilty with love, service with honor, and both breaking with justice. Their Majesties call forth Baroness Adain. The kingdom stands or falls by its accomplishments. The middle kingdom stands through the wars of summer by fourth farms by the strength of its army. Yet these armies would stand uninspired without the bards of the kingdom. <laughs> As our champions stand with us in court, bearing swords and shields which the kingdom stands, so too is it our desire that the champion of the guards accompany us as well. You shall be the very foundation upon which our armies and our people of our kingdom stand. Nadine, do you wish to accept this honor? To be here and shall never forget, nor fail to reward that which is given. Guilty with love, service with honor, and oath breaking with justice. Woohoo! Woo! Woo! Champion! Huzzah! Huzzah! <laughs> Their Majesties call forth Baron Amon, Vicar of Roaring Waste. 
<laughs> we have some business for you. So, you were put into a very novel experience. For it's not common in the bedroom for us to have a baker as the Baron and Baroness sit on the front. But now, they have stepped down and we no longer need of your services as a As a token for our appreciation for you standing up during these times, we are awarding you an augmentation of this. With the green sun. Represent your time as a Thank you very much. For His Excellency, huzzah! Huzzah! There being no further business, this suspends the court of Wittain and Nyasa. All rise if you are able for their most royal majesty. And for their excellencies, Baron Uleg and Baroness Slaney. And for the assembled baronage of the mid-round. 